First time in the major leagues this year. Last two years, he did not pitch at all. He has been on the DL with arm injuries. Charlie Lee on the mound. That was very nice of the fans here at the stadium to give him a standing ovation. He's going to face this lineup. Lenny Dykstra, Howard Johnson batting number two. A lot of home runs for number two hitter. He'll be fouled. Field Reigns in left, Winningham in center field, Webster in right. The catcher is Jeff Reed, and the leadoff batter for the Mets, Lenny Dykstra. Dykstra hitting 283 for the year. Nine home runs, 34 runs batted in. So Dykstra, who is hitting 267 against the Montreal pitching this year, with 12 hits and five runs batted in, to lead it off, and the ball game underway. And Lee starts off with a fastball for ball one. Lee was born in Orleans, France. Became the first pitcher ever born in France to pitch a no hit no run game. Pitching to Lenny Dykstra. Lenny in his last 12 games hitting 333 and that is ball two. Two balls no strikes. On deck batter for the Mets Howard Johnson batting second tonight as the Mets have shifted their batting order around Wally Backman not able to play. He has a sprained wrist. And a strike call. So the count two and one. When was the last time a second hitter in the lineup had 34 home runs? Rogers I, Hornsby? <laughs> could be. I don't know. <laughs> Rather unusual, to say the least. Charlie Lee, first pitcher to pitch a no hitter for the Montreal Expos since Bill Stoneman did it twice. One time against the Mets. And that ball fouled off. So the count two and two. Stoneman now the general manager here in Montreal since Murray Cook resigned. Lee's no hitter was the 191st no hitter pitched as you look at this large crowd here tonight. By the way it was the only no hitter Gary Carter ever caught. So Lee who has the shortest surname of any no hit pitcher working here against the Mets with a 2 2 count and he goes to his first curveball. It's a ball. Lee, when he was in his prime before the arm operations, had an outstanding curveball. Back in 82 against the Astros, he gave up a hit to the leadoff batter Craig Reynolds and then retired 26 in a row. Originally drafted by the New York Mets, but didn't sign. Also pitched a one hit ball game against Houston. He has been a very good pitcher. And this ball fouled back, so the count stays at three and two. Well, most guys would have given up three years to come back. He was already in the major leagues, and as Ralph mentioned, had some success, ended up back in the minor leagues, and three years later, he's back. Dwight Gooden standing by or sitting by, getting ready to start his ball game, and John Candelaria sitting next to him. Three and two. All four, and Dykstra leads off for the walk. In yesterday's ball game, a win for the Mets, 12 to four. Dykstra led off the inning with a walk, and later on scored without the Mets getting a base hit. That will bring up Howard Johnson. Howard hitting 276. 34 home runs, 90 runs batted in. The club leader in RBI, second in home runs to Daryl Strawberry. Daryl with 35. Johnson, number six on the home run list, and a toss over against Dykstra. And another action play at first. Seems like when you go indoors as a player, it takes a while for your body to become accustomed to everything indoors. And you're more, lethar more lethargic than you are aggressive. Baxter with 24 stolen bases. And the strike call for strike one. You wonder whether David Johnson will use the same strategy with the power hitter, Johnson hitting second. With Backman hitting second, he would think more toward the stolen base. I would. I'd st I wouldn't go away from my game at all. Stay with it? Sure. 
All right, we'll see what happens. Dykes were faking at a break and holding, and the pitch low for ball one. One ball, one strike. Mets have 135 stolen bases. Dykstra has 24 for the year. He's been thrown out seven times. And of course, with the threat of the stolen base comes the fastball, and you're looking at one of the best fastball hitters in baseball talking about Howard Johnson. Johnson hitting 208 with 10 hits against Montreal this year. Three of them home runs. He's driven in 11. Again, Dykstra back, back from a very short lead. Once again, one ball, one strike to count, and Dykstra a good break, and the ball is looped into center field for a base hit. Dykstra easily going to third, no play there, as Winningham gets it back in, and the Mets have runners at first and third with no one out. So Howard Johnson getting a pitch here, Lenny Dykstra on a move, and Howard Johnson hitting the ball off the end of the bat and looping the ball into left field or into center field. So now runners at first and third and Keith Hernandez the batter. Keith hitting at 302. He has 16 home runs, 80 runs batted in. Keith picking up his 2,000th base hit in yesterday's ball game. He became the 154th player to get 2,000 hits in the history of the game. In his last 13 games, he's hit three home runs and driven in 14 runs. He said his 1,000th hit was a broken bat base hit and he legged out his 2000 and it was an infield base hit. imagine that and Hernandez takes a strike for strike one Keith hitting 288 against the Montreal Expos this year with one home run 11 runs batted in he's had 15 base hits Charlie Lee's last game was in Indianapolis against Louisville and he pitched five innings of no hit no run baseball and he bounces that one away a run will score and the ball going into the dugout so one base off the mound Dykstra scores the Mets lead one nothing and Johnson goes to second on the wild pitch. Well, Jeff Reed all he all he has to do is try and get in front of the ball and a lot of times you're not going to keep the ball in front of you many times it's going to bounce to the side and when it does you're in trouble another shot of that pitch down and in a left handed hitter well I'll tell you you tend to shy away from really going down on your knees and blocking that ball inside you're always literally the left handed hitter taking a rip at it and hitting you with the bat. So a run in a runner at second no one out and the curveball swung on a miss. The count one ball two strikes. It was the curveball that was bounced in the dirt for the wild pitch. And then Charlie Lee coming right back with it. That was a good curveball. You wonder when a guy hurts his arm if he'll shy away from his breaking pitches. It's always tough to pinpoint that one pitch that you hurt your arm throwing or nearly you, you get that bad feeling with your arm the following day. So you, it's tough to pinpoint the pitch. I would say it's when a pitcher extends, and you usually extend on a fastball or a slider. Curveball, your arm really isn't extended. Back to the fastball, it's fouled back out of play in the count one and two. Buck Rogers, the manager of the Montreal Expos, certainly a candidate for manager of the year. Well, he'll probably run away with it. Although Roger Craig's got to be a pretty good candidate, but this guy here, he had his own player saying we can't win. At the start of the spring training session, and Hernandez pulled completely on a fastball way out of the strike zone, and Lee picks up his first out. A good live fastball from Charlie Lee, and out of the strike zone, and Keith Hernandez was swinging and saying to himself, you shouldn't be swinging at this pitch. That'll bring up Daryl Strawberry. Strawberry hitting 280 for the year, 35 home runs, 89 runs batted in. Daryl is fourth on the home run list with his 35. He is fourth in slugging percentage at 577 and fourth in walks. He has 85. And the curveball, a strike call. 
Strawberry in his last 10 games, batting 356 with four home runs, 12 runs batted in. And it's really tough to set up Daryl Strawberry. He just goes to the plate looking for the pitch. Batted in against the Montreal Expos this year. And the fastball, one ball, one strike. Think he goes up there looking for location? I doubt if he does. No, I think he just relies on that God-given talent. Just cock it and let it fly. Yeah. Johnson, the runner at second base. Mets leading one nothing. One man out. Top of the first inning. And that fastball right in his alley. One ball, two strikes. Darrell making a face while he was taking the pitch. He must have been guessing here. Watch as he makes the face. Turn that face up. Oh, we're not going to see it. So it's one and two to Strawberry. Goes to the curveball and again it's in the dirt. Good block that time by Jeff Reed. Johnson holds it second. And the count two and two. And here's a scoring update. The Pirates and the Cardinals. You're going to look at that pitch again. And a nice play by Reed. It's one nothing. The Cardinals on top of Pittsburgh. Top of the first inning at Pittsburgh. Willie McGee hit a triple and scored on a base hit by Ozzie Smith. In games where the Mets have scored the first run of the ball game, they have a record of 53 and 23. And they lead here 1 0 in the first. Two and two the count. Curveball hit out to deep right field. Way back. Going, going. It is gone. Goodbye. Wow. Oh, what a shot. Charlie Lee threw a hard fastball. That guy right there hit number 36. We've talked about MVP candidates. How about Daryl Strawberry? He hit that ball an awful long way here at Olympic Stadium. So the Mets take the lead by a score of three to nothing. Strawberry, by the way, now with 91 RBIs. Oh boy, did he hit a home. Here it is. This picture's worth a thousand words. Watch where it lands. He put it in somebody's bedroom out there. <laughs> oh. So a rude welcoming for Charlie Lee. Side angle, Darrell getting ahead of the bat, arms extended, and hits the ball a mile. Boy, oh boy. So Strawberry in his last 11 games with five home runs and now the batter is Kevin McReynolds and he takes the first pitch. Kevin hitting 282 for the year 25 home runs 82 runs batted in he brings a hitting streak into this game. He has hit in 11 straight games. The fastball back. Well, the Mets are really throwing a tough lineup at the Expos tonight with this talking about offense. Reynolds batting 306 with 15 hits and four home runs against the Expos this year and that's ball two, another fastball two balls one strike. Charlie Lee's last major league victory was back in 1984 on August 16th against the San Francisco Giants. And the curveball again three balls one strike on deck batter Gary Carter. There is Gary Carter, the former big man, number one man here in Montreal. And the curveball for ball four. So the second walk in the inning for Charlie Lee. And the Mets again with a base runner, and the batter will be Gary Carter. Carter having a tough time against Montreal this year, hitting 140 with six hits and 43 at bats. He does have one home run. And he has driven in three overall. He's hitting 240 with 18 home runs and 76 runs batted in. It's amazing what a trade will do for you when you change uniforms. It goes from cheers to booze. Cheers to jeers. Mm. Fastball, strike one. First time Gary Carter faces his old battery mate. And 
And again, the fastball. This one, a ball in the count, one ball, one strike. Mets leading three nothing in the top of the first inning. They put the shift on against Carter, moving the second baseman almost behind second base. Shortstop in the hole, and McReynolds draws a throw. Again, a throw over there. The trick against Montreal is don't let them get to their bullpen. Their bullpen has been fantastic. And this ball found back out of play. Since July 11th, Montreal's bullpen with 18 wins, 18 saves, and only three losses. And right there, Heathcote is throwing for Montreal. The bullpen we're talking about, though, the bullpen they use when they are ahead or even in the ballgame. Burke is 7 and 0. McClure is 6 and 0 in his last six decisions. And the fastball, two and two. They pretty much stole McClure from the Milwaukee Brewers, and of course Buck Rogers managed Bobby McClure in Milwaukee. That helps a lot of players if you play for a guy and he likes you. He'll give you another shot. Looked like Bob McClure's career was over, and he's found new life here in Montreal. There goes the runner, and Carter pops it up. The third baseman Tim Wallach will try it, and he makes the catch as. McReynolds comes back to first base. So two men away, and the batter will be Dave Mag Magadan. Magadan batting 327 with three home runs, 20 runs batted in. Two of his three home runs have come as a pinch hitter. In his last 27 games, he has had 26 hits, batting 433. It's been a while since Gooden took his warm up tosses. About 20 minutes into this half inning. And that's ball one. The fat. Another fastball. Two balls, no strikes. Those pit real tough leather. If you have a nice soft hand and give with the ball, the glove won't pop. And there's a strike. So the count two and one to Magadan. Pitchers in a bullpen really like to hear the glove pop when they're getting loose to go to the game. Psychologically. I used, to, I used to like to just relax my hands and catch it so there was no pop to it. They didn't like you. No, not at all. There are other reasons, though. <laughs> More than just that glove. <laughs> there goes the runner again. A big jump, but the ball is swung on and fouled off. So the count two and two. And Montreal, the temperature today was around 70. And Magadan takes a fastball inside, and that fills it out to three and two. Reynolds will be running with the pitch and he goes and the ball is fouled away. Have a good chance to get out of last place. Again the runner goes and again the three two pitch fouled off. Once again at three two. Once again, the runner running with a pitch. The ball is pulled foul down the right side. Just foul. It's in a hurry. He reminds me a lot of Lou Pinella from the left side of the plate. And again, the pitch in tight. Again, it's hit foul. Maybe playable. Wallach over there. And he makes the catch. And retires the side. But the Mets get three runs. The big blow, a two-run home run by Daryl Strawberry. And hits eight of them home runs. He has walked 49, struck out 114. And lifetime against Montreal, he has a record of four and three. And he'll face this Montreal lineup tonight. Tim Raines leading off to be followed by Mitch Webster and then Hubie Brooks. The middle three, Tim Wallach, Andres Galarraga, and then Tom Foley. And the bottom three, Herm Winningham, Jeff Reed, and Charlie Lee. And the defense for the Mets, Hernandez at first, Tuffle at second base, Johnson playing shortstop, Magadan playing third. In the outfield, McReynolds in left field, Dykstra in center, Strawberry in right field, and the catcher is Carter. The umpires for this game, Harry Windlestad behind home plate, Bob Davidson at first base, Jerry Crawford the umpire at second, Terry Tater the umpire at third, the official score. As we can't have nepotism in this game. No. 
Not at all. Hey, by the way, speaking of Harry Windlestad, the home plate umpire, he, this is his first game back after two weeks off, two and a half weeks off due to illness. He had a inner ear infection. Lost his equilibrium. And the first pitch to Tim Raines as he leads it off is in there a call strike. Raines hitting 328. He has 17 home runs, a career high. 63 runs batted in. And he's hitting 333 against the Mets with four of his home runs against the Mets. And one of them a grand slam home run against Jesse Orozco in his first game played. And that pitch a ball and they count one and one. Gooden with a record of 71 and 25 in his major league career last year 17 and 6. Fastball hit on the ground. Hernandez off to get it. And Gooden takes the throw at first base for the out. Keith ranging in front of Tuffle, the second baseman who had an easier play. It looked like Rain stepped on Gooden's foot as he touched first base. Hernandez. Makes it look so easy. And good in the fine athlete getting over there. It's always the great race when Reigns puts the ball in play any place on the infield. Good and gave him, gave him a lot of the bag and he still got a piece of it. Mm. Now the batter will be Mitch Webster and he takes for ball one. Webster hitting 284 this year with 12 home runs 54 RBIs the 12 home runs a career high. Also the RBIs. And the fastball is missed. One ball, one strike. Mets leading three nothing. Picking up three in the first, and now Montreal trying to get back in. One ball, two strikes. You certainly don't want to get into an extra inning game with Montreal. They have the best record in the National League. They've won 12 and lost only one. And in one run ball games, they're also the best in the National League. They've won 25 and lost 12. And that fastball close. But if we're going with stats, Dwight Gooden is tough at night. So we should leave now. Gooden is 53 and 11 at night. In the daytime, 18 and 14. And that curveball, a good one. All right, Dwight, so that's all for Webster. He has the good stuff tonight. Good heater. He's popping that glove. And here's the hook. Usually he doesn't have that sharp break and hook early in the game. And right there, a good curveball to Webster. Good and even though it took him about 25 minutes to get on the mound after he warmed up starting out fast. His next batter will be former Met Hubie Brooks. He'll be hitting 246 with 11 home runs 48 RBIs and the curveball is missed. He's got a nasty breaking curveball right now. Hubie has hit good and well he's hitting 412 against him with seven hits and 17 at bats. One of these days Gooden's going to start off with this type of stuff and throw a no hitter. He has had one one hitter. A base hit by Keith Moreland when he pitched against the Cubs. And the curve, strike two, and he's got a good one. Yeah, he's freezing Hubie Brooks at the plate. Here's that hook. Hubie, obviously, when you face a guy like Gooden, you have to sit on the heater. He's gotten two curveballs over to Hubie. What would you throw him? I'd stay with the curve. Hook him. And he went to the fastball for a ball one and two. Gooden has lost his last two starts. Which puts his record at 13 and six. And he has lost once to Montreal. And it's bounced up the middle could be trouble fielded. Not fielded by either the second baseman Tuffle or the shortstop Johnson. And there goes the no hitter. Uh, Tim Tuffle and Howard Johnson getting together momentarily and they're not comfortable I'm sure playing with each other out on that infield because they haven't played together that often and uh, Howard Johnson very aggressive very strong and Tim Tuffle knows it here comes Howard he's over messing around with Tim Tuffle's ground ball if you're going to play a guy out of position you just have to accept some of the shortcomings that's not easy to move around especially from third to short. Oh boy. Now the batter will be Tim Wallach and he is a candidate for rookie for MVP in the National League having a great year. Wallach hitting 303 23 home runs 112 RBIs 
I know we talked a lot about uh, Reigns, his importance to the ball club, which is great, but this guy here producing those runs, he has to get a close look for the MVP award. This ball hit in the air to right, strawberry right there. And that'll do it. So one hit, one left, and the score at the end of one. The Mets three and the Expos nothing. But if you, if you want home runs and you want a guy that's going to give you more punch at shortstop, you have to put up with it. Well, you know, I think it was one of those plays. It would have been a base hit anyway. I don't think Tuffle could have thrown him out if he had fielded the ball. Possibly he could have. Yeah. But it's one of those things where it was right down in the center of where everybody would gather. You and think, when you gather, it's tough. Think Howard Johnson could have thrown him out? No. You don't think so? Okay. But I think he had a better shot at throwing him out than Tuffle because he was moving that way. And right here, here's Tim Tuffle. Tuffle hitting 311 this year with 10 home runs, 44 RBIs. And he's four for nine against Montreal this year with one home run. Batting against Charlie Lee. First time he's seen Lee, and the curveball bounced, and it's ball two. It's not bad to be able to have a 311 hitter in your eighth hole with 10 home runs. Tuffle was extremely hot the earlier part of the year. Lately, he has cooled way down. But you do run into peaks and valleys in this game as a hitter and there's a ball hit real hard to center field way back. It's over the head of Whittingham and it bounces off the fence. Whittingham trouble with it. Tuffle's going to try for three. The relay throw not in time. Oh, a double and an error on Herm Whittingham. I'm, I'm surprised they gave him an error. Ordinarily when the guy has trouble picking up the ball. He Tend to just give him a triple. This guy that keeps score, Horwitz, must not have ever played this game. <laughs> Ball is really tattooed. I mean, it's a tough bounce. Really? Bounces off the glove? That's part of the triple. Hubie Brooks putting some heat on that ball, but not in time to catch Tuffle. Ball short ops the wall, winning him, hits in his glove, bounces out. I'd give him a triple. But it is scored as a two base hit as Tuffle goes to third in the air by the center fielder. That is Tuffle's 25th two base hit. And it brings up Dwight Gooden. This ball topped out in front of the plate and no play at home as Tuffle comes in to score. And the Mets lead it four to nothing. Ball getting away from the catcher on a half swing. And it is being called a strike as we look at it again. Well, Jeff Reed, really, he's taking that left leg and, and bringing it towards the right leg. I'm surprised he just doesn't go down and put the glove in between the legs, and you kind of curl the shoulders, and you try to smother the ball. The ball ain't Reed up. And now Gooden lines it to the left, and it bounces in front of range, and he comes up with it. And Gooden has his 12th hit of the year as he follows the wild pitch with a base hit to left field. So now Gooden at first base, no one out. The Mets leading four nothing, and here comes Buck Rogers to the mound, and this might be all for Charlie Lee, making his first start in the major leagues in three years to the day. Yeah, well, Buck Rogers took a chance going with Charlie Lee, and now he is removing Lee. I think he'd go longer with him if the game wasn't so important. The fans here appreciating Charlie Lee just going out on the mound, and we'll be back with more right after this. Players were saying, we're not going to win. We can't do anything. And people were saying they're, they're two, play, two good players away from having a good team in the International League. And what a year the Expos have had. With Tim, Tim Raines back in the lineup, the Expos have had a fantastic record. They're 72 and 48. That was one of the big moves. As you look at any Dykstra take ball one. Dykstra walked and scored his first time up. Runners on the bases for the Mets in the first and the second inning. They have scored three in the first, one more here in the second. Good in the runner at first base with no one out. And Dykstra fouls off a fastball. One ball, one strike. Dykstra walked in the 3-2 pitch on a hit and run single by Howard Johnson. He went to third and scored in a wild pitch for the first run of the game.
Galarraga not holding Gooden on at first, and this ball hit in the hole, and a great diving stop by the second baseman Foley, and he picks up the out. He takes a base hit away from Dykstra. Oh, what a play by Foley. Good hustle by Dykstra. Oh, what a play. Foley coming up with the ball, and Dykstra head first slide in the first base. You know, we talked about uh, it, uh, players don't get there as fast when they slide, but you know, I think Dykstra does with that head first slide. Great play right there by Foley. Comes up and just does get Dykstra. One thing about a play like that, you've got, you're going to get hurt sometimes. That's right. That's right. But I really and truly believe Dykstra gets there as fast as he would if he stayed running. Because when he dives, first off, he's short, he's close to the ground. When he dives, he dives in a hurry. So on the play, Gooden goes to second, and the batter's Howard Johnson. Howard turned around to the right side with the left-hander in, and it's strike one. Johnson singled his first time up. Mets leading 4 nothing as a bat here in the second inning. One strike to count and strike two. You know, if you think about that sliding into first route, the head first slide would get you there in a hurry, whereas if you go with the regular slide, it would slow you down. Regular slide, you have to flip your body around, and that would take some time away. He has more home runs batting left handed, 19 to 15 as a right hand batter. Hess Kith on the mound making an appearance against the Mets his first one. The two strike pitch bounce in the dirt. Reed keeps it nearby so good. One ball two strikes. And the pitch is fouled off over the dugout on the first base side. The count state. Bob was a little kid when I was around. That's right. We saw Ray Boone in San Diego scouting for the Red Sox. And that fastball inside. In fact, when I first went to San Diego, I rented. Held by Al Lopez talking about Bob Boone. Al Lopez in the Hall of Fame, but he's in the Hall of Fame as a manager. He was a great catcher, though. There was no doubt about it. A great defensive catcher. Two and two. And another foul ball. You know, even as a man, it's Spaniard when he got to be famous, he was a Castilian. <laughs> <laughs> two and two, the count. And a hard ground ball to the second baseman, Foley. Foley comes up with it, picks up the out at first base, and Gooden crosses, runs batted in. Whoa. Chin music to Keith Hernandez there as Hesketh comes in tight. Very tight. Mm. Well, the one thing I think you do to Keith Hernandez, he really doesn't get mad, but he gets more determined at the play. He's more determined to stay in on the left hander. I don't think I'd be throwing in on him, knocking him down. One ball, no strikes to count. The count to Keith. Two and oh. There are certain guys you can throw in hitting him and he wouldn't play against them. He put it in the paper. Two and oh the count. And that's ball three, so the count goes three and oh. Keith goes at Jim really is big. Yeah, I know, but I'd be hitting him too. <laughs> Three one pitch. Ball four. So a walk to Keith. And that'll bring up Daryl Strawberry. Strawberry with a two run home run in the first inning to put the Mets up 3 0. His 36th home run of the year. And Daryl now with 91 runs batted in. Strawberry 
took it over the right center field fence about 450 feet to pick up that 36 home run. That is his fifth home run in his last 11 ball games. He is now tied with Eric Davis with those 36 home runs, his high school buddy. And that pitch inside for a ball. Davis got off the run leader, Dawson with 44, and also the RBI leader with 121. Former Montreal Expo. The 1 0 pitch, and it drills Strawberry right in the back. Darrell seems to be all right as Hesketh. He's not throwing that. Holds up the bases. But of course, Hernandez went down. Now Strawberry gets drilled. And over at third base is Strawberry's best friend who's pitching in this game. Things could liven up a bit. Boy, well, he's not throwing at Daryl Strawberry here. Montreal's got too much to lose to be drilling hitters. Daryl gave with the ball very well. Still hurts, though. So that'll bring up Kevin McReynolds. McReynolds walking his first time up at a 3 2 pitch, and he has the bases loaded. Kevin hitting 282 with 25 home runs, 82 runs batted in. Had his career high in home runs last year with 26. Mets leading 4 0. We're only in the top of the second inning, and that pitch, ball one. Now a strike call, so the count one and one. Base is loaded. Gooden, Hernandez, and Strawberry. Mets leading 4 0, two men out, top of the second inning. And this ball hit out to left center field. It's high in the air, time to get to it. Reigns is there, and he makes the catch. So that ends the inning, but the Mets get one run on two hits. So we'll call for it. What happened? Let him have it. Incidentally, Detroit, Toronto tied for first in the Eastern Division of the American League. The Yankees seven games back. And in the Western Division, Minnesota leading Kansas City by three and a half and Oakland by three and a half. Right here, the Mets are leading the ball game, four nothing, bottom of the second, and Andres Galarraga, the batter, and the curveball by Gooden for ball one. How about the year this guy's having? Galarraga hitting 320. 12 home runs, 83 runs batted in. Good and back with a fastball, one and one. I'm going to go, though, with Wallach as the MVP on the Expos. Reigns, it's tough to overlook Reigns, though. It's tough to overlook the fact they're 72 and 48 since yeah. he came back. Of course, they played pretty good ball up until he came back. And the fastball fouled away. This Good curveball, goodbye. Mm. So Gooden picks up his second strikeout, both on curves. There, as we look at Tom Foley batting. Foley hitting 312, a good year there. Five home runs, 28 RBIs. Having a tough time against Gooden in his major league career. Two for 19, hitting 105. One ball, no strikes. Fastball, one and one. Gooden, of course, in his last outing on Saturday, had his, one of his worst outings of his career. And you wonder if it would carry over to today. Some guys, it makes a guy like Gooden more determined to do well. This ball sliced down the left field line. It's curving foul out of play. Gooden knocked out of the box after two innings, the earliest departure in his major league career. Fastball, ball two, two balls, two strikes. Good ball movement on that ball. You could tell just the way Carter caught that pitch. Incidentally, San Francisco beat Houston today. So Houston now eight and a half games behind, and San Francisco's just about put it away. They lead Cincinnati by seven and one half game. Nice article in USA Today about Al Rosen. Rosen went out and picked up Rick Russell, made that big. <laughs> Excuse me, a big trade with San Diego. Kevin Mitchell turning out to be a fine 
pickup for them. 20 home runs. Kevin, of course, with the Mets last year, traded to San Diego in the Kevin McReynolds trade. Two and two. Curveball. What a curve. This is the best curveball Gooden yeah. has had. In a long, long time. Ball breaking again out of the strike zone. Coming right over the top. Watch this. Close to the head. Bringing the arm oof, down through and forget it. That's a Bob Felicker has been compared to him. And Bob Feller a couple of years ago made the statement that give him time to mess up his life and then we'll see how great he is. Well, he was almost right this year. Gooden got into trouble, but it looks like he's got everything straightened out as that pitch is fouled off. One ball, one strike. The batter Herm winning that. Who was it? F. Scott Fitzgerald wrote, show me a hero and I'll show you a tragedy. Of course, Gooden, as you mentioned, coming back strong. Winningham hitting 236 for the year. Former Met with four home runs, 39 RBIs. One ball, one strike. Chopped off the mound, and it'll be a tough play. They can't get it. Oh, boy. The ball to more chop. But Gooden reacted so well, it's almost impossible to get a guy like Winningham who runs that fast when a ball hits off the plate and bounces this high. Oh boy, he, that ball hit off the middle of the plate. Why imagine, so, imagine a top spin. So hard to pitch a no hitter when you can get hits like this. Did you get many infield hits? Few. Not too many. I didn't want them. <laughs> now the batter is Jeff Reed. Reed hitting 205 with one home run, 18 Bonk. runs batted in, and a balk is called on Dwight Gooden, the first balk that he has made this year. I wish I knew why they call it a balk. I think they're calling the spin move, but I mean, all umpires don't call that move. Well, he got that back foot up and off. I believe he got it off the rubber. But they still they want you to step instead of spin, and he was spinning towards first base. Now look at it. Now watch that right foot. It comes up in the air, so he hadn't spun. Yeah, he gets it off the rubber. He sure did. I don't see that as a balk. They want the pitcher when he goes to the set position to step towards first base but as I said not many umpires call that a block and now it's called and that's why you have so many stolen bases those umpires are calling box at a higher frequency than ever in the history of the game Reed gets the next pitch it's a strike and that's strike two I think television has something to do with it too you like to get that exposure you want, they want to get <laughs> They want to get the replay and then get their name That's in That's right. Let's see what you mean. <laughs> I think television has slowed down a game. Catchers walking to the mound, taking their masks off. Nobody took their mask off before television. Two strikes, a count and strike three. So Gooden strikes out, foul, foul, foul tip, tip yeah. okay? Foul tip, got a piece of it to stay alive. Now I'll bet you another thing, Ralph. Since they had the break in the glove, more foul tips have been caught than ever before. But right here, it hits off the heel of the glove. And you can't fall the catcher yeah. for that. Remember when they had that little pocket in the glove? I wonder how many foul tips were dropped in. Hundreds. Yeah, you needed two hands to catch. You'd have to be crazy to put that hand out there. That's why catches all their fingers were broken. So again, Gooden with a two-strike pitch, and this one chopped up the middle. Tuffle with a routine play, and he picks up the out. That ends the inning. Two strikeouts in the inning. Day Enterprises and Sports Channel is prohibited. Third. Sorry, Ralph. I got a score from Pittsburgh in the third inning. It's Cardinals four, Pittsburgh one. And for the Mets, it'll be Gary Carter to lead it off. Mets four runs on four hits. Montreal no runs on two. Carter popped up to the third baseman his first time up. Batting for the first time against Joe Hesketh, who relieved Charlie Lee, the starting pitcher, in the second. 
And a ground ball to third. Tim Wallach has it. Now Galarraga and Carter a quick out. Magadan hitting for the first time against the left hander. And that's ball one. Ball two, two balls, no strikes. And it's up the middle, a base hit. Hubie Brooks shaded over in the hole, and Magadan singles to his left. And the Mets have their fifth hit in the game. And sometimes, like Wade Boggs, who hits the same way, you find out how to pull a little bit, and then you become a great hitter. That's right. I'd rather see someone hit like that than to open up too soon all the time. And a throw to first, Magadan, not really a threat to steal. I think Tuffle, the batter, though, does hit and run. I think as Magadan learns the pitchers and gets stronger, he's still very young. He's going to hit a lot of home runs. And that pitch in there called strike. Tuffle double over the head of the center fielder his first time up. Went to third on the play, and Winningham in center field was charged with a tough error. Tuffle later scored on a wild pitch, the second run that the Mets got on a wild pitch. Dykstra had scored in the wild pitch back in the first. One ball now, pardon me, one strike now, two, and Tuffle behind. He's five for ten against Montreal this year. Earlier in the year, when Tuffle was going so well, a lot of experts so-called experts said he ought to be playing every day back when wasn't hitting at all this ball hit to Galarraga the big cat they'll try for two they don't get it the Grand Cato Galarraga at first base and he has some good action well one of the smoothest fielding first baseman for a right hander probably ever in the game what about Gil Hodges Gil Hodges and Dick Power said one of them <laughs> One of them. I got to protect myself by this thing. You're right about Big Powers. He was the original hot dog in baseball, and he could handle that glove. And also, Gil Hodges, who was a very conservative first baseman, went a great one. That's for Galarraga can also handle himself. That'll bring up Dwight Gooden. It's now six to one, by the way. The Cardinals on top of the Pirates in the third. Gooden singled the left his first time up. That was the base hit that knocked Charlie Lee, the starting pitcher, out of the game. For Gooden, his 12th hit of the year and 55 at bats. They got Tuffle moving toward second, but he manages to turn around and get back. When Hesketh got to the top of his kick, he just hung there and then stepped towards first. I'm sure the left handers are very concerned with bringing that front leg behind the back leg. Therefore they really don't have those great pickoff moves that they used to have. Up the middle and it's through for a base hit. Good and two for two. Tuffle goes to second and holds there and Dwight having a start on a great night. Two for two. Oh, here it is again. Dwight Gooden really bringing his hands in and fighting the ball back up the middle. Looked like a major league hitter right there. You no, know, he hits well left handed and he's thought about batting from the left hand side, but he doesn't want to expose his pitching arm to being hit by a pitcher. I think the Mets don't want him to expose him. I think Dwight would go up there left handed. That'll bring up Lenny Dykstra. Dykstra has walked and scored. He also was out on a fine play by Foley, the second baseman. Foley taking the base hit away. Baxter and one of the stars of yesterday's win when the Mets won 12 to 4 over the Cubs. Did a great job defensively. Also did a good job with the bat and that's ball one. Well I thought that was an exciting play when he picked up the infield hit and Sandberg throwing the first and Miller scoring. 
from second base. Oh, bodies were flying all over the place. Dykstra diving in the first and Miller diving in the home. That time it was a close ball game. That play set it up for the Mets to take a 4 1 lead. Two balls, no strikes. Heskith with a record of no wins, no losses. He has picked up one save in 12 games. Ball three. Here will load up the bases and would bring up Howard Johnson. All four and the bases are loaded. In 1934 for the St. Louis Cardinals. And there's ball one. They appeal to the first base umpire, Bob Davidson, no swing. Major League record is. To hit over 40 home runs and not drive in 100 runs. Davey Johnson. He said he thought it was him. The answer was Mickey Mantle. So even the Trivial Pursuit game is wrong. I think more than one. Yeah, I would say so. Davey said the uh, Trivial Pursuit game had only one. At Three and oh, the count. Bases loaded. And ball four, and a run is forced in. And the crowd starting to boo. And there's a strike. Mock cheers here in the big hole. A good breaking ball. Always surprises a hitter when he goes to the plate and you're having control trouble. He throws a breaking ball for a strike. Bob Sebra continuing to throw in the bullpen for Montreal. And Keith goes after a bad pitch, strike two. Good in the runner at third. Dykstra, the runner at second base. Johnson, the runner at first. Two strike count on Keith Hernandez. Mets leading five nothing. Two men out. We're in the top of the third inning. it in the dirt and the wild pitch will score another run third run scoring on a wild pitch in this game as Gooden comes in the score and the Mets lead six nothing but that ball just eats Jeff Reed up once again he's a, a long night for the Montreal Expo catcher Buck Rogers can sympathize with him Buck did a lot of catching for the California Angels Ball hit in front of home play. Hit the plate. Nothing you can do but chase it. So the count one ball and two strikes on Hernandez as Daxter goes to third, Johnson to second on the wild pitch. Two balls, two strikes. Two and two the count. Strike three. So Hefkid strikes out Hernandez, and that'll do it. The Mets get two runs on two hits. There were two walks and two men. Doherty has 
Been up four times this year in the major leagues with no hits. And he fouls off a fastball for strike one. One strike to count to Jack Doherty, and it's a broken bat base. Hit to shortstop that has taken away the throw in the dirt, and the call is out by first base umpire Bob Davidson. Great play by Johnson. The throw no good, but Hernandez does it again. Well, broken bat right back up the middle, and Johnson gloving the ball, throwing off balance. You can do that a lot when you have Hernandez at first. You know, you don't have to make the perfect throw. Good play by Hojo. So one away, and the leadoff batter Tim Raines batting for the second time. Raines rounded out to Hernandez his first time up. That's ball one. Mets leading by a score of six nothing. They have six runs on six hits. The Expos no runs on two. Incidentally, Doherty at Indianapolis batted 312 this year with seven home runs, 50 RBIs. Fastball for ball two. And that's how you get to the majors. In my leagues, I'd say you face two or three good pitches per staff, maybe four. In the major leagues, you're facing some pretty good pitches every day. Those starters come at you pretty strongly. Mm. 3 and 0 the count to Reigns. A strike call. The fielders are a little bit better in the major leagues. Of course, the playing surfaces are much easier to field the ball in the major leagues. And the lights are better. Lights are better. Pitches are more consistent. You see them over and over again. Ball four and Reigns watch. Reigns hitting 328. Second in the National League to Tony Gwynn, who leads the league at 371. So Reigns is on. And Reigns, a fine base dealer. And there he goes, a curveball and no throw, and Reigns has his 45th stolen base. That was a great jump by Tim Reigns. Nothing you can do. All you can do is hold the ball. The high leg kick, Reigns guessed that Gooden was going home. Got a tremendous jump off first base. Combined with the speed, forget it. How about Reigns tying Louis Aparicio with 506 career stolen bases? He is now tied for 13th in the all-time list for stolen bases. And there's a hard ground ball taken by Hernandez. The throw to Gooden in time, and Keith takes a base hit away from Webster as Reigns goes to third. Keith Hernandez takes as many base hits away from hitters as Brooks Robinson used to do at third base for the Orioles. You don't even want to hit it in that vicinity. Usually a hitter, when he's at the plate, he hits the ball hard, he hits it in a certain area. You pretty much know it's a base hit. I think when the Mets come to town and you hit the ball down towards Hernandez, you're really not sure. He takes a ton of hits away. There's no doubt about it. Here's Hubie Brooks, who singled his first time up. And he gets a curveball, chops it to the third base side. Magadan with the play and the throw to first base preserves the shutout. So in the <laughs> of all the things I could have said, yeah, huh? really. <laughs> <laughs> and Daryl Strawberry takes a curveball for a strike. How about the home run Strawberry hit first time up? Oh, I'll tell you, he uncorked that baby. No pun intended. There's another one. Look at this. Winning here makes the catch. Every time he swings the bat, there's a shot at a ball going over a fence. Uh, he has got an update on that Pittsburgh Cardinals score, six to two. In the fourth inning, Cardinals on top of the Pirates. And a ball to McReynolds, one and one. One out, we're in the top of the fourth inning, and the Mets have a comfortable six-nothing lead against the Expos in the first game of this two-game series. Mo 
ammonia water on the towel? Possibly. Looked like Lawrence of Arabia over there. <laughs> it did. Huh? Peter O'Toole. Yeah, that's ammonia water. The guys use that. They usually use it on, on hot nights, but Gooden is a pro profuse sweater. Yeah. He sweats an awful lot. Foul ball. This is a, this is a good town for sweaters, by the way. It really it used to be a, a great town for sweater. Why is that? Well, because there was no roof on the That's on this. Right. You know, you know, it's amazing in this ballpark and in this town, you can leave the hotel or you you used to when when uh, the subways or the metros were in the bottom bottoms of the hotel. And it's a ground ball. Nice play, Foley. Yeah. Good play. Score four to three, two outs. But you could leave the hotel, go down, get in the metro, come to the ballpark, and come out here and watch a ball game and never go outside. Good play by Foley. Well, that was a fine, fine play. Tom Foley having a good year. So two outs. Batter now, Gary Carter. Some of the hotels downtown do have sub subway or metro stations below. Queen Elizabeth. Yeah, Queen E, the other places. And with the dome here, you can take the metro, and it's all enclosed from the metro station to the big O, and you can never go outside. And this is a good town sometimes, never to go outside. Oh, it can get cold up <laughs> here. Ooh, does it ever. One and one on Gary Carter, who spent 10 glorious years here in Montreal. Now they boom when he comes to town. Two and one. Third ball misses down low. Nice turnout tonight, but I thought it would be bigger for this game. Expos and the Mets. First game of a two game series. Looks like about 35,000 on hand, but I thought it'd be close to 45. They had 50,000 the first game when the Cardinals came in town. Once again, a note I mentioned earlier, the Expos will be in New York next week, Wednesday and Thursday. Some seats still available for those two games. Three and two on Carter. Mets try to close in on three million people. They need 194,000 to do that. That'd be great. But they have to go to the ballpark to be counted. You don't have to stand up to be counted, no, no. but you do have to go to the ballpark to show be up. Right. Well, they just counted Gary Carter out. Good curveball by Bob Schaefer with three and two count. And for the Mets. Well, as you say, that's true. I haven't been gone long. I think the biggest adjustment may be hitting again. I uh, haven't hit in three years. Years, and quite honestly, I'm afraid uh, the ball may be coming a little too quick. <laughs> Is John Candelaria the same guy that we saw in the National League a few years ago? I think the controls uh, is still there. The the desire to win is there. I think John has changed through the years, and the ups and downs uh, of life uh, have taken its toll. But he's here. He's here to help New York try uh, to win in pennant. And like I said, Fran, it's 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 wonderful to be home. John. So John Candelaria back home and very happy. And the Mets are happy tonight. Right now, a six nothing lead. Tim Wallach, the batter. Outside to Wallach. One and two. And how about that? Wookie Wilson in the in the ball game. Well, Darrell was plunked his second time up by Joe Hesketh, and I would imagine that that lower back has tightened up on him a bit, and that's why Mookie's in the game. One ball and two strikes and Tim Wallach. Outside two and two. That was a very, very good interview, Fran. Thanks, Tim. It, it was it was interesting what John had to say that is. If that's his biggest worry, Davey Johnson and Frank Cashin and now Harrison and Joe McElvain are very happy. Yes. Hitting up here. Oh boy, what a Uncle Charlie right there, one down. I agree with Ralph. I think Gooden has had his best curveball that he's had, and I think this year he has had his best curveball in any year, including 1985. I think he's been getting the curveball over. A lot better. He's had better control. He's got an excellent curveball oh, tonight. Just continues sure to bite, bite, bite. Struck Galarraga out his first time up on a good curveball. Gives him another one. Also, a very perceptive and an interesting comment by Candelaria, and your heart really kind of goes out to John. That tragic 
tragic death of his baby. Yeah. Really year close. and a half years old, or one and a half years old, and drowned in the swimming pool, actually in a coma. And baby lived for another four months in a comatose state and and died. And that, that you never recover from something like that. Yeah. Well, he's back home. And of course, the National League is a buzz about that trade. How'd the Mets pick up Candelaria for two minor league players? I did an interview before the ball game with a French reporter who writes for the French newspaper up here. And he was saying that, you know, the Expos, here the Expos have to start Charlie Lee, yeah. who hasn't pitched in a game in three years. Why can't they make a deal like that? And I, I, it's a very interesting question. I really don't know the answer to that. But deals like that are not easy to make because one organization, I would imagine, might be in a better position to give up better young talent than another organization. It might be that the young talent that the Expos had to give up didn't meet the requirements that of the players that the Mets had to give up. Everybody feels the Mets are loaded in the minor leagues now. Did he go? Yes, he did. So good and gets Galarraga, who's a good hitter, in fact. But coming into tonight's action, Galarraga batting 320. And Andy does not strike out a lot, but really a good sequence of pitches here, starting him off with two breaking balls. And now look how he pushes off that back leg and uses the lower part of his body. That's why I don't think Gooden. He may be beat around and loses effectiveness, but I do not think it will be because of arm problems. No. Right now, the batter, Tom Foley, who also struck on this game, he takes a ball. Speaking of arm problems, they're starting to think now that uh, pitchers are having trouble with the rotator cuff when you de-accelerate the arm after it comes around your body. They say it's a tremendous uh, wear on your rotator cuff when you stop the arm. Popped up down a left field line, and it's unreachable for Howard to the Toronto Blue Jay game. There's strike two to Foley. What happened? Acting Baltimore manager Frank Robinson had Toronto shortstop Tony Fernandez's bat impounded upon suspension, suspicion of corking. Fernandez flied out to center field before his bat was taken away. Chopper to second base. Get that bat. Scored four to three. That'll do it for the Expos. Three up, three down at the end of four. Six nothing Mets. Of the area between his seventh and eighth ribs after being hit by the Joe Hesketh pitch. So we hope Daryl's all right. Okay. Gosh, you've already got Wally Backman down. Hernandez is lame with the bad ankle. Now Strawberry. Don't need that. No, Magadin is out right there, so one down. Well, we talked about the job Buck Rogers has done. How about the job Davey Johnson has done? Really has. Maybe a better job this year as a manager than he did last year. And he won it. But he also has a great shot at winning it here in 87 as you look at Tim Tupple. I mean, last year everything just went together so well. You just don't have years like that. This will be more rewarding if the Mets win it this year. Probably will be. The chase is always exciting. As Tuffle takes a ball for the Expos. Fouled off. Look at that. Timmy, a chip off the old block. Huh? <laughs> a lot of times that uh, that wood at the end of the bat on the on the barrel of the bat will chip. And sometimes that ball hit off the end of the bat. Sometimes hitters will bore out the end of the bat. It actually has about a, an inch and a half hold in it, hole in it. And when you hit the ball off the end, it kind of just shaves off. You see the barrel of the bat at right at the end, right there, that white part, that is kind of grooved out in there. And sometimes when you hit it off the end of the bat, that there may be no chip, but it chips it with its velocity. And Tuffo chips one to left field. Reigns catches the ball. Two out. Can whip it around. Good. Whips the bat around, but a ground ball to his ex-teammate, Yubi Brooks, who throws him out at first. So that'll do it for the Mets. Here in the fifth. Three up, three down. Looks like a plug in there. It What's does. going on? Nah, that's no plug. No. Nah, nah, that's no. 
Bill Webb trying to pick up something here. But you see how that could happen, how the chip could just chip off the barrel of the bat if you're fooled on a pitch and you hit it off the end of the bat. And that's what happened when Timmy was fooled on that pitch from Sebra. Well, the batter now for the Expos as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning, Herm Winningham had an infield hit his first time up back in the second inning. It's a ground ball to short. Oh, Joe, the first in time. One down. It always appeared to me, Tim, talking about that bat, that the indentation made the top of the bat. If you did hit a few balls on the end of the bat, it would chip off. That indentation seemed like a weak part of the bat. Well, it is, but if you hit a ball off the end of the bat, you don't care what happens. I know. I mean, you're not supposed to hit it off the end of the bat. That's the idea. Well, if you tend to hit the ball on the hands or off the end of the bat, you got to keep that solid bat. You know, you won't do that for long. <laughs> That's right. And the batter now, Jeff Reed, the catcher. He foul tips the ball off of Gary Carter. Next met Jay Tibbs. He could have started the ball game tonight. Buck Rogers told me before the game that the reason that Charlie Lee was starting is that Jay Tibbs had a bad back right below the right shoulder and that Floyd Yeoman, since he was in that car accident, coming back after examining his right hand, and he came back to visit the doctor, and on the way back from the doctor, he had an accident. Wow. We lost some teeth in his... His uh, face is just a mess. So that's why Yeomans is not starting. Yeomans out of the starting rotation for the time being until his face heals. One and two on the Montreal Expo catcher. Score against good. Foul off. So the action on Sports Channel. There's that Uncle Charlie. Strike three, good pitch. Outstanding curveball. He hits a fly ball right field. Mookie Wilson, who's replaced Daryl Strawberry in this game, makes the catch, and Pirates come to town. And Lee Dykstra takes a curveball for a strike, 0 and 1. Chance to wrap up this 1987 season and send the Mets to Philadelphia and St. Louis in good form and good fashion on a winning note. The Mets the winningest team at home in the National League. 46 and 30 at Shea Stadium. Ground ball second base scored four to three one down. Gosh you know Sebra has really restored order. He's retired seven in a row striking out one since coming in the ball game. Sir for the Expos and we'll pass along to you about Howard Johnson. The 30 30 club Bobby Bonds has done it five times. It's been done 12 times and Johnson has done it for the 13th time this year. But only one other guy one other season. Five ball. Shallow right center field and they're converging and nice play Herm winning there. Only one other player has hit 30 or more homers stolen 40 or more bases 30 or more bases and driven in over 100 runs. That was Bobby Bonds in 1977 and Johnson with 90 RBIs has a chance to do it this year. Good play by Herm Winningham. Keeping records of where hitters hit the ball. You see different lines in that book, different colors, meaning who they're batting against. As Keith Hernandez steps in and takes a strike. 0 and 1 on the Met first baseman. There's the book. It's like the Metro system. Yeah, here. it really does. <laughs> and some guys take the book seriously, and other guys don't. Well, a, a lot of it depends on, you see the, the different colors for the lines, they denote different pitchers. For instance, Dwight Gooden may have green. Orange might belong to Bobby Ojeda. Red to David Cohn. Blue to Jesse Orozco. And you can always look at the book and see how a hitter may hit you. But on those particular nights, you may not have your real good That's stuff. Right. 
and the hitter might not feel good. Yeah, exactly. So you got to kind of, it may help a little bit, but you can't be a slave to those charts. Two and two on Hernandez with two men down here in the top of the sixth inning. A lot of, a lot of the game has to do with feel on a particular day. That gut feeling. And the 2 2 pitch. Inside, three and two. It's now eight to three. The Cardinals on top of the Pirates in the sixth inning in Pittsburgh as you look at Mookie Wilson. Swung out and missed strike three. So the Mets go down here in the top of the sixth. Three up, three down at the end of five and a half. Mets six, Expos nothing. Reigns and Carter exchanging pleasantries. Something that didn't happen the first year Gary Carter was traded away from Montreal. I was thinking the same thing. Fly ball down the left field line, foul. Off season. Down there in the Palm Beach area in Florida. Outside, one and one. the one one pitch popped up left field McReynolds one out 300 with that streak too not only during that streak but for the year a good looking player yeah he's a runaway he's not up to uh, 303 but I think he's right at 300 he's a runaway rookie of the year nobody I, else even close yeah unanimous choice should yeah. be yeah now one and one on Mitch Webster, who's 0 for 2 in this game. Terry Pendleton, of course, had the 19 game inning streak that Santiago tied. Padre's very high on Sandy Alomar's son, who's a catcher in the minor leagues. They say he's just like Santiago. In fact, Joe McElvain said the same thing about Sandy Alomar's son. So they're loaded with catching in the San Diego system. Two and one on Webster. There's Joe. Joe Mack. It's funny, I was interviewing John Candelari before the game, and Joe Canoe, it's the first time they met. And he traded for him. Along with Frank, and Cash, and Al Harrison. It's amazing. The uh, Cardinals were very, very surprised with that trade. The Montreal Expos talking before the game. They were surprised that the Mets were able to get him. Well, Frank Cashin has said that with Ron Darling out for the remainder of the season, that it was imperative that they get a an established pitcher, preferably a left-hander, and boy, they couldn't have come up with a better one. Mm. He's been through it before, too. Look at that curveball. So Webster goes down. Two outs. That's six of the seven strikeouts tonight on curveballs. And this is the first called strike three. Second time Webster has gone down tonight. Gooden can do anything he wants to right now. That's how good his stuff yeah. is tonight. Ten in a row retired by Dwight. And the Expos with only one legitimate hit in this ball game, And that was by Hubie Brooks in the first inning. The other a high chopper off the bat of Herm Winningham in the second. And Hubie Brooks is the batter. He takes the fastball for a strike. He's one for two in this ball game. As Tim mentioned, only two hits by the Expo, six by the Mets, six runs. It's six zip. Mets on top of the Expo. Took a straight changeup. It was. Fly ball way down the left field line. Foul. Fortunately, you know, he got this on the inside part of the plate. Actually, a little off the plate. That ball's on the middle of the plate the way Hubie timed it. It could have been a home run. Oh, it was yeah. way out of here, but foul because it's hard to keep that ball off the plate inside for a fair ball. He went around. Yeah, yeah he went too far. First base umpire. Jerry Crawford said that'll do it for Hubie Brooks, and the Expos go down one, two, three here in the sixth. Gooden has been outstanding, and the Mets are happy. They're also in front. 6-0 Mets.
Gooden in full control, striking out eight. He has given up only two hits. Mookie Wilson hits for the first time. Ralph Kiner in here for the second time tonight. Okay, Tim, and it has been a dominating game for Dwight Gooden, and he has had the best curve I've seen. Man, it's it's hard too. Seven of his eight strikeouts have come on the curveball, and Wilson fouls back the first pitch from Bob Sebra, who came in in the fourth and has retired nine Mets in a row. There's the doc. Mookie has a five game hitting streak hitting 412 over the five games. Good fastball swing and a miss 0 and 2 to Wilson. Mookie Card Cardinals winning their game big and the Mets winning big. Mookie in his last 15 games hitting 392 so he's gotten hot at the right time. Inside one and two. Sever has been tough. Nine in a row. Bob from Ridgewood, New Jersey. Curveball gets Wilson. You didn't think after the first three innings that this game was going to go this quickly through the middle three. Well, ten in a row for Sebra, and that is his fourth strikeout. He is high in strikeouts this year, and it's amazing that his record is at six and fourteen for the season. 33rd appearance for Bob. He has 146 strikeouts, and that's in the top 10. Well, this is the time of the year also that starters become relievers. It's others. The whole staff is utilized. One and one. With the exception of Steve Carlton. He went forever and never relieved, didn't he? Yeah, he sure did. Well hit to left field. Reigns over near the line, and he made the play. A nice running catch by Timmy Reigns. Two away. All right, here the off speed pitch, and McGriddle's a little bit out in front of it. And he is now 0 for 3 in this game with a walk, and his hitting streak is in jeopardy. He came in with 11 straight games where he had at least one base hit. Gary Carter curveball and a swing and a miss. This the time of year, however, about hitting streaks and everything with the Mets as close as they are. Not one of those, I'll guarantee you. Yes, those players, they're unaware of all of them Carter fouling it back it's 0 and 2 unless it's monumental now Mets one game and a half behind the St. Louis Cardinals line drive nice play by Tom Foley who is playing a bang up game at second base the Mets go in order it's still six to nothing, middle of the seventh. Now let's go to Lee Zeidman in our studio. Go. Thanks, Tim. Let's update you on that Yankees game playing in Milwaukee, or rather the Milwaukee Brewers in the Bronx. The story is this, Milwaukee has taken a lead. Watch Glenn Bragg, a big triple here. Off the wall. It is now five to four. The score in the Bronx as the Brewers lead the Yanks. Boston and Detroit two nothing. Tigers lead there. Baltimore and Toronto seven to nothing. The Blue Jays beating up on the Orioles again. We'll send you back to Montreal after this. Allowing only two hits by the Expos. One by Hubie Brooks and a high chopper by Herm Winningham. Total control for the dock tonight. It's six to nothing, New York. And to lead it off the Expos here in the seventh, Tim Wallach. Gooden has had two shutouts this year. He's had five complete games to go with his record of 13 and six. Wallach go for two on the night. Tim second in the league in RBIs with 112. And with two more RBIs, he will break the Montreal Expos record for RBIs. Andre Dawson, not surprisingly, 
had 113 back in 1983 in the curve for a strike. Wally's the first man to hit two home runs off Dwight Gooden in one game. Curve ball grounded to third. Easy play from Magadan. One out here in the seventh. That'll bring up Andres Galarraga, who has K'd a couple of times, both swinging. Not too often you overmatch this young power hitter. He was struck out on a curveball his first time up, and then on a fastball his next time up. The only man that has struck out on a fastball in this game for Montreal. There's the curveball. Man. No contest. When you throw 94, 95 miles an hour and then throw a curveball like this. Oh. Another curveball. That's four in a row that he's thrown two to Wallach, two to Galarraga, and Galarraga in the hole, 0 and 2. Dwight looks a lot more calm tonight, doesn't he? He seems to be pitching a control type uh -huh. game. Usually he grabs it and throws it. It seems like he's really trying to pinpoint his pitches, really taking that assurance that he has uh -huh. with him. Got him on the curveball. Nine strikeouts for Gooden. Two outs. Well, this ball breaking out of the strike zone. Galarraga overmatched in that appearance. Very few good curveball hitters. I don't care how many people you talk about. The good one. There are good off-speed hitters. Oh, the uh, I think uh, when you see some of these kind of slurs and things like that. Yeah. That's a different ball game. You can really rip those. But when you've got an overhand curve like this, it's really tough. Thank goodness, say the hitters, that all pitchers don't have that particular pitch. Otherwise, it'd only be a pitcher's game. It'd have nobody to pitch to. It's six to nothing New York after seven. We'll be right back after this. Games are in New York to battle the Yankees on Sports Channel Plus. And Friday on Sports Channel. And the Yankees, of course, that's tomorrow for that first game. Friday on Sports Channel the next day. And the Yankees legend Mickey Mantle will be in the broadcast booth. So catch this big Eastern Division matchup. That's the Bombers and Blue Jays at 7.30 on Sports Channel Plus. And Friday at 7.30 on Sports Channel. Sports Channel Plus is not available in all areas. Mickey Charles Mantle. This is Charles, isn't it? Isn't it Mickey Charles? Got me on that. Dave Maggot in the batter. Mickey always a lot of fun. Number seven. He has that subtle sense of humor. Oh, man. Base hit from Maggot inside the line. Dave's going to have at least a double. And that is the first hit for either side since the third inning. And here we are in the eighth. First base runner since the third inning. Well, Magadan in his last 27 games, not including this one, batting 433. And in this game, he gets his second hit. He's now two for four. And the two base hit for Magadan is his 12th of the year. So Dave hitting very consistently for the New York Mets in spite of very little playing time. I'll say. All right. Quick hands. Yeah, but can you do it on the mound? Well, let's read Nichols so he doesn't have to. If he does it, it's the game's out of reach. Vance Law's already worked two games this year as a pitcher. Well, he comes from Stock. Vernon Law, one of the outstanding pitchers for the Pittsburgh Pirates, 20-game winner back in 1960 when the Pirates were the world's champions. Won the Cy Young Award that year. So Maggot in at second base, nobody out. 1-0 to Tuffle. Timmy, one for three on the night. A couple of runs scored. Six to nothing, New York totally in control of this ball game. No contest up to this point. Ball two to Tuffle. Sebra came in in the fourth inning. He retired 12 in a row before the Maggot and double to open up the eighth. The Mets were three in the first, one in the second, two in the third. Two and two. The Mets hoping the price isn't too high. Daryl Strawberry 
having his right rib cage x-rayed now between the seventh and eighth ribs. Gooden and Dykstra on deck. Good play by Reed. Boy, he's had some tough chances tonight. Outside, so Tuffle walks. First walk issued by Sebra and the batter Dwight Gooden, and you can look for him to bunt. Even though Doc two for three on the night, he singled, scored a run in the third inning, and grounded sharply to shortstop. Pinch runner Keith Miller is going to be in there for Dave Magadan with the bun in order. And the Mets wanting to shore up on their defense. They'll move Johnson to third base. Santana will be at shortstop. And a good night by Dave Magadan. Two for four in tonight's ball game for Magadan. Keith Miller at second base. And we have mentioned that Keith cannot hit. And he can't feel because he can't throw with that right hand. He has started to take batting practice, that little finger of his, really in bad shape. And I got a nice note from Gene Shallot of NBC. He said, well, what's he doing there if he can't hit and can't feel? <laughs> well, he can run, and that's I guarantee he can do that. That's exactly right. He stole a run scoring from second base in an infield out in yesterday's ball game, and this was the ballpark that he injured that finger. In his first major league game, it's 0-2 to Gooden. But when you have the luxury of going to a 40-man roster this time of year, why not have someone up here like that? He is a competitor. He's going to be a great player. And the bunt is out in front. Reed to third, not in time. And there's that competitive drive you were talking about. Well, if you can't hit and you can't field, you got to run. And he just outruns his play. Reed coming out here and Jeff making a quick recovery and a good throw, but it's not in time. That stand up slide. Watch it from this angle. There's a good angle of it. Ball not butted too far off the breaking ball. It's a picture perfect slide as he goes in and comes right on up in the bag. That'll go as a sacrifice for Dwight Gooden. That was really a great shot because it's not too often to graphically and visually show a runner stand up in that slide. What happens is with that leg extended. You hit that bag and you just pop up. Watch it one more time. This is pretty. Get the underneath leg, the one that's behind, and you kick up on that as you hit that bag. And one of the things about a slide like that, it makes it look to the umpire like you've got there a long time ago. Right. That's why you don't hook into a forced bag. When you're going to be forced out, you want to get there as quickly as possible. And a hook slide, while it's a little tricky, a little tricky, it doesn't get you there as quickly. So Dykstra batting 1 and 0 infield in nobody out curve ball low 2 and 0 to Dykstra. Any hitter would love to hit in this situation 2 and 0 infield in bases <laughs> loaded. Wow. Money all out there stacks of it. Well hit deep right. Webster back and this ball is out of here. Grand slam home run for Lynn Dykstra and the Mets lead it 10 to nothing. Dykstra with his 10th home run. That's a career high. His best before was eight and a grand slam home run. 
as the roof falls in on Bob Sebra, who had retired every batter he had faced until this inning. He had retired 12 in a row. So Sebra knocked out of the ball game on Dykstra's 10th home run, his first Grand Slam home run of this year. And the Mets, scoring 12 runs yesterday, now have scored 10 today. And the Mets came into this game leading the National League and hitting at 271. And they're catching up to the Cardinals as they have now scored 735 runs this year. The Cardinals just a few ahead. So we have a new pitcher in the game, Jay Tibbs, coming in. And Tibbs will be the fourth pitcher used by Buck Rogers. Tibbs has a record of four wins, four losses. He has no saves, an earned run average of 5.38. This is his 16th ball game. He has started 10. He has worked 72 innings, given up 86 hits, nine of them home runs. He has walked 30 while striking out 46. Jay Tibbs, a former Met. Casey Candell also in the game. He will bat ninth. Tibbs batting in Tom Foley's spot. I beg your pardon. Foley moving to third. And Tibbs batting in Tim Wallach's spot. Wallach being given a little breather. So if you're keeping score at home, you can put Jay Tibbs in the number four hole and Candell batting ninth. A lot of times, Howard Johnson, he has lifted 34 over the fence this year. One for three tonight with an RBI and a run scored. RBI number 91 on the year. Still eight to three. The Cardinals over the Pirates in Pittsburgh. That game in the top of the eighth inning. Lee Mazzilli now out to pinch hit for Keith Hernandez. A game like this, you would think Keith would have had a good night, but not so. That's strange, isn't it? But that's mm -hmm. when you're going well when other people pick you up. And of course, Keith twisted that ankle the other night, so yeah. they're trying to get that back in shape so he'll be at full strength. Still nobody out here in the eighth inning. Ten to nothing, New York. It's no balls, two strikes to Howard Johnson. Outside, one and two. and two. Jay Tibbs of course started the season with the Expos came over from the Cincinnati Reds and he went to Cincinnati in the Bruce Barini deal. Barini no longer in baseball. Low three and two to Johnson. Pascal Perez, the starter tomorrow night. He'll be going against David Cohn, and he is shaking his head I... like he doesn't believe it. Pascal, a future pitching coach, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a final Toronto defeated Baltimore 7 to nothing. Line drive to right, but there's Mitch Webster, and he hauls it in, one away. And the batter, Lee Mazzilli, to pinch hit for Keith Hernandez. Well, Mazzilli with 13 pinch hits. He's batting 283 as a pinch hitter with one home run, eight runs batted in. The Mets with 22 runs in the last 17 innings. Well, the Mets getting their fifth Grand Slam home run. The team record is six. They had that in 1985. And it was Len Dykstra's first Grand Slammer. Outside to Mazzilli, one ball, no strikes to Maz. How about all the marks Maz has on his bat?
pine tar. He's got, look at the marks all over the barrel of the bat. He's got pine tar up to the, well past the label. Since that George Brett home run, that was ruled unofficial, then official. They've kind of ignored that rule about pine tar being up too high. Tibbs covering, Galarraga to Tibbs, two outs. He's at Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Having his ribs x-rayed. 0 and 1 to Wilson. One and one. Home runs are up over 25 percent. Batting averages are up. Runs scored are up. ERAs naturally are up. So how can scuffing a baseball by a pitcher help them? <laughs> They've been doing it for years and years and years. Ever since the spitball and all those odd pitches were taken out of baseball in 1920. Well, Mookie Wilson takes the Mets out of this inning. The second time Mookie's gone down in strikes. Jay Tibbs retired three in a row. But this game's history, let's face it. Four runs for the Mets on two hits, a grand slam home run by Dykstra. It's 10 to nothing, middle of the eighth. <laughs> the curveball for a strike. Herm, one for two on the night. One of two hits for the Expos. Had a helicopter hit back in the second inning. <laughs> Fastball on the corner, the old high chopper. It was up there. It was really a Baltimore chop. Good and fielded it through the first base, but didn't have a chance to get him. Ball bouncing right off home plate. Misses outside, one and two. Gooden trying for his 10th strikeout on the night. And he gets it. So Dwight Gooden with a double figure strikeout here tonight. That's his 35th, his third this year. 35 times he has struck out 10 or more batters in a ball game. His high for the season, 11, and that's the Mets pitching staff high. They've done it six times. Fernandez has done it three. Darling has done it two, and Gooden has done it once. As Casey Candell prepares to hit for the first time this evening. Strike to Gooden. Boy, he's thrown a lot of strikes. Curveball is just low. Only one walk in the ball game to Tim Raines back in the third inning. Raines got as far as third. And he is the only man to get the third base for Montreal in this game. Inside, two balls and a strike. the corner inside so it's two balls and two strikes to Jeff Reed. Ten to nothing New York leads. Down low so the counts full to Jeff Reed. Doc trying to win his 14th game of the season and break a mini two game losing streak. He has lost to the Phillies and the Cards in his last two outings. Reed jammed and Mazzilli will take it himself. And for Gooden that is 16 in a row retired by Dwight. Casey Candell the batter. Casey batting 276, his first at bat of the night. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 
high for a ball. Casey's mom, if you'll remember, a professional player back in the early 40s, big story earlier in the year, goes for a ball that he can't handle that high heater. It's one and one. Professional hardball player. Yeah. Not softball. Only three outs tonight in the outfield. For the Expos. Fly ball to left, fly ball to right, and a fly ball. Actually, only two. Wallach in the first inning and Reigns in the sixth. No, there were three. That's right. Tim, Tim Reigns in the sixth, and then uh, Bob Sebra. Sebra, the right field. Yeah, in the fifth inning. There were three. Two to right and one to left. Outfielders have had a picnic out there. Candell's mother was her maiden name was Helen St. Aubin A U B I N from Vancouver Canada and she played pro ball in the 40s and 50s. <laughs> That's the kind of night the outfielders have had you'd almost go to sleep but Candell gets himself a hit. That's only the third hit for the Expos. Candell at first with two outs, and that's the first hit since the second inning for Montreal. And the batter, Tim Raines. Well, it's a breaking ball, and Candell stays on it very well and lines it into right field. Mazzilli playing behind Casey at first. It's 10 to nothing New York, bottom of the eighth, and Tim Raines is 0 for 2 on the night. He walked and stole base number 45 in the third inning. Fly ball left field. McReynolds back, and he makes the play. No runs a hit, one left. Gooden still in firm control of the Expos. 10 to nothing, Dwight and the Mets after eight with home plate umpire Harry Wendelstedt. That is Tom Romano in left field giving Tim Raines a rest. Dave Engel the first baseman. Luis Rivera the new shortstop spelling Hubie Brooks and behind the plate Nelson Santovina. Nelson Santovina. Vania. S-A-N-T-O-V-E-N-I-A. -E Nelson Santovina. Seems like another name should go with Santovania. <laughs> Not Nelson. Not Nelson, no. Yeah. Mark Carrion is going to be the pinch hitter for Kevin McReynolds. Both managers using a bunch of their younger players with this game out of reach. It's 10 to nothing, New York. Carrion with his last or with his first major league. Hit. That might have been a Freudian slip, for I had my last major league hit in this ballpark. Mark had his first on Saturday. Mark one for three as a pinch hitter. Tale of two hitters. Barry Lyons on deck. Slider is low to mark, two and one. Grounder to short. Rivera gets tested immediately, and so does Engel. One out. Carry on hit 312 with 10 home runs and 89 RBIs while playing for Tidewater this year. The batter, his last at bat in last night's game, a three run homer against the Chicago Cubs and Jay Baller. The Mets with three in the first, one in the second, two in the third, four on the Len Dykstra Grand Slammer in the eighth inning. 0-1 to Lions. Barry hoping for a Lions share of a big payoff at the end of the season. That amounts to something like $90,000 if you go all the way. He got part of that last year, but it would not be as much, obviously, as... He would get this year since he's been with the team the full season. 
He even has voting privileges. Ground ball towards second. Should be an easy play and is for Casey Candell. Two outs. The best meeting that I was ever in, Ralph, and I was in a lot of those meetings where you cut up the shares, was in 1964 when Bob Euchre was on the club, Roger Craig, and it, right, Bing Devine was fired earlier in the year. And we had the meeting to divide up the shares, and Bing said, I know you guys were, or Roger Craig was speaking for Bing. Said, I know all you guys were close to Bing, and if we win this thing, I think we ought to at least give Bing a ring <laughs> if we go all the way. And Euchre said, I'll call him. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> that was it. They met a telephone <laughs> call, not a World Series ring, huh? It's a funny line. <laughs> one and one to Almond. Bob Euchre, of course. Funniest man I've ever met, I'll tell you. Natural wit. Curveball for a strike. One and two to Bill Almond, batting for the first time tonight. Two and two. Three and two to Almond. Tim Tuffle on deck. Ten to nothing, New York on top. Inside, so Almond coaxes a walk from Jay Tibbs, and that's the first base runner for the Mets as Tibbs has won a couple of games. He scored a couple of winning runs. Got a key rightful guy. High 2-0. Oh. Make that 2-2 two two to tough. Mets with only eight hits on the night. Two of those, however. Yeah, I was right. It was two and zero. Oh. Now it's two and one. One of the two of those, however, home run run. Strawberries thirty sixth in the first, and Dykstra's tenth, a grand slammer in the eighth. Three and one to Tuffle. Ball four. So two straight walks by Tibbs. We'll bring up Dwight Gooden. Mets also now with 174 home runs on the year, and Gooden fouls one off off his ex-teammate. He and Tibbs, if you can believe that. He's got plenty of them now. <laughs> <laughs> for, for dress and for work. 0-2 oh to dwell on the major. A chance. It's <laughs> a good scouting report. Who do you feel is the most deserving of the Sports Channel in New York? 100, 210, 1266. Mitch Webster swings and misses. Mitch 0 for 3. Way Strawberry has been surging. I've got, I think there's a slight edge for Daryl right now. If Johnson finishes strong, maybe Hojo. That's the way I would vote. That's the way it looks, doesn't it? Yeah. Mazzilli sucks up the grounder from Mitch Webster and makes the play. Only three hits for the Expos. Good and working on career shutout number 16. Of course, Dwight may have a broken rib. Hit on a on the ribs, the rib cage between the seventh and eighth. Ribs by Joe Hesketh. Mark Carrion staying in the game and playing left field, giving Kevin McReynolds a rest, and Luis Rivera the batter. Rivera made his major league debut against the Mets last year at Shea. Went two for four in that game. 
Broke up a no hitter. Yeah. Wallace Johnson, the National League leading pinch hitter on deck. Popped up and out of play, one and one to Rivera. Got a base hit off Bob Ojeda, breaking up a no hitter in the seventh inning. That was his first major league hit. Something to tell your descendants. Boy, that's not. <laughs> well, you talk about getting sawed off. <laughs> oh, man, Termite City right there. <laughs> Call Orkin. <laughs> they got to be yelling. Well, you got, got a good laugh. piece of that one. Yeah, you got to <laughs> laugh about that. Ron Hansen enjoying it. I mean, you get sawed off like that. Only a foul ball. Check this Look out. Look where he hits it. He hits it off his left finger. He thought the bat was <laughs> fair. He was running to first. That's what happens when you look at curveball and you get to fastball. <laughs> look for the local. You get the express. It zips right by you. And then, well then you get the local. I by no means am laughing at Luis Rivera, but I'm laughing at the futility of anybody on pitches like this. 11th strikeout for Dwight, and that ties a high for any Mets pitcher this year. Sid Fernandez did it three times, and now Dwight Gooden has it for the second time. Well, Dwight with a chance to have the strikeout high of the season for the Mets. Well, that was a nasty oh. curveball right there. You get sawed off and then have to confront that. Wallace Johnson, the batter, and the curveball is low. Johnson really having a terrific year. Now he's leading the major leagues in pinch hits. Sixteen pinch hits. He's had one home run, twelve runs batted in. He's been up fifty-six times. Ball two to Wallace. Cardinals and Mets both win. That means the Cardinals remain in first place. The Mets a game and a half back, and the Expos fall to four games back. The Expos will have 18 to play after tonight and the Mets 17. Mets will have 12 on the road and five at home. And they play these Expos next Wednesday and Thursday night and there are tickets available. And Wallace draws the second walk issue by Dwight Gooden on the evening. The Mets, Mets need to average 38,751 to make the three million mark. And that would be the second best attendance ever in Major League Baseball history. The Dodgers have done it, I believe, six times. They're high right around 3,600,000. And we forgot to uh, mention also 31,000 here at Expo at the Big O tonight, Olympic Stadium. And the Mets are over 2 million on the road this year. Grounder toward third. Johnson to Tuffle, and the misery is over for the Montreal Expos. Dwight Gooden records his third shutout of the year. He also shut out the Cincinnati Reds and the San Francisco Giants. Gooden on target tonight, striking out 11 and walking two. Ralph and I will be back with a wrap-up right after this.
I'm Lee Zeidman. Coming up next, the pennant race report. All the Major League news on New York Sports Nightly. But bad news tops the news tonight. The NFL looking at a strike possibility after management rejected the latest offer from the NFL Players Union. Some say a strike is certain. Yanks take aim at Milwaukee in the rubber match of that series. The Giants lose their taste for burned toast and will profile the most amazing Met, Rafi Santana. Those stories, all the scores, highlights, and more coming up on New York Sports Nightly after a few final words from Ralph and Tim at the stadium in Montreal. Stay with us. Dwight Gooden with his third shutout of the year, his 16th of his career as the Mets beat the Montreal Expos 10-0. Tim McCarver along with Ralph Kiner. Fran Healy will be talking with Dwight Gooden, and while Dwight is changing his sweatshirt, I don't think he has been as dominating this year, Ralph. Outstanding curveball. I got everybody but one batter on his breaking ball, and he had great command of his pitches. Certainly pitched a very, very good ball game coming back after two games that he had lost and of course he was knocked out against the Cardinals in two innings the fastest exit he's ever had in the major leagues got a lot of support from the Mets though, as they scored 10 runs and the first run of the ball game came across when Dykstra walked went to third on a hit and run base hit by Howard Johnson and then scored in a wild pitch after that Darryl Strawberry had a two run home run and after the game that's normal uh, procedure for pitchers after to pitching a, a, a ball game so Dwight in the trainer's room he did tonight win his 14th ball game he struck out 11 he walked two as the Mets coasted winning 10 to nothing over the Montreal Expos only 17 games left remember and Ralph and Fran and I will be back tomorrow night game time 730 for the final game of this shortened two game series the final score once again this evening the New York Mets 10 and the Montreal Expos nothing the Texaco star of the game tonight is easy. It's Dwight Gooden, who ran his record to 14 and 6 with his third shutout of the year. Remember, tomorrow at 7.30, the Mets clash with these same Montreal Expos, so catch all the action tomorrow on Sports Channel. Plus, Yankee legend Mickey Mantle will be in the broadcasting booth for the Yanks Blue Jays game starting at 7.30. Up next, it's Lee Zeidman with the latest on the New York sports scene on New York Sports Nightly. For Ralph Kiner and Fran Healy, this is Tim McCarver saying so long until tomorrow, and thanks for watching Mets Baseball on Sports Channel, the official channel of the New York fan. Good evening, everybody. champion New York Mets baseball has been brought to you by this buzz for you by your New York New Jersey Buick dealers the goodbye people by manufacturers Hanover the financial source worldwide by today's TWA find out how good we really are by Mexico super unleaded gasoline with Petrox detergent to help keep your car's power flowing by Toyota and the all new line of 1987 cars and trucks who could ask for anything more and by the American Express card.